Hello, everybody. This is Jim from the Nerd Network, and you're watching Nerd Talk MCU Edition, the show where we chat about nerdy things that are of interest to us. Today, we're going to talk about Marvel She Hulk Episode 9, the conclusion episode titled Who So Is This? It's a great title, where Jen finds herself in trouble with the law and struggles to pick up the pieces of her life. With me today, as always, is Jake, another fan of all things Marvel. Together, we're going to discuss the episode, what we liked, what we didn't, and how we think this ties in with the broader MCU. So Jake, thank you for joining us and everybody else. Thank you for joining myself and Jake. And Jake, let's get started with this and say what what were your overall thoughts on this episode? Um I said last week that it's not been a secret that I've been flatly frustrated with the show. And then That's last very week true. very much fixed my first Let me mute my phone. Last week very much <laughs> fixed my frustrations. Um, I will tell you that this week, it was like last week teed it up, and this week, to me, I know we talked a little off camera, and we're a little opposed on this, but this week knocked it out of the park for me. Um, I was impressed that Marvel swung for the fences, and to me, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and I did not enjoy the, I did not enjoy some larger parts of this episode. There were some things I wanted to see resolved, and I didn't like how they got resolved. Mm -hmm. And it's perfectly understanding, too. And there's some quick. stuff, there's some stuff that I liked the way it was resolved because I thought it was, I didn't like some of the storyline, and so I'm glad they fixed it. I just didn't like how they fixed it. Um, but I can say that this was a, definitely a very much a She-Hulk uh, show episode with some amazing fourth wall breaks, some really clever uh, storytelling. Even if I didn't like it, I will admit that it was clever. Mm -hmm. And I would really enjoy that. And I'd really like to get in and talk about this episode. So, Jake, if you're ready, we can get into the spoiler section. All right. So here's spoiler alert. Nom, 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 eat it up. Oh, play, okay, three, two, one. You know I'm the hottest. You ain't never got to hit me up. I'm oh, you are way more fun than my last lawyer. I will kill for you, Megan. You sound Solid back. All right, so if you're still with us here, you haven't hopped over to Disney and watched the show yet, and you want, or you have, and you want to hear about it, and or well, you haven't done it. What Jim means is you haven't pounded your way through the screen to jump over to Disney. Yeah, that happens later. And uh, so with this, though, uh, this episode, of course, aired on October 13th. It was 32 minutes long. Good episode. They've been really good with the show length. I've enjoyed that. Uh, we had the same people in right this. We had Kat Corio was directing. We had Jennifer Gal writing. Uh, we had Tatiana Mazzani. We had Mark Ruffalo. We had Tim Roth. We had Ginger Gonzaga. We had Jam uh, Jamila Jamil. We had Renee Goldsberry. We had Charlie Cox. Everybody was in this episode. Um, and uh, there were some surprise people in this episode. We will get to them, though. Uh, but I... My favorite part of this entire show, I do have to say, was probably the intro, where they oh. took it, they adjusted the ratio to back to three by four, so it looked like old television, and it was basically, if you haven't seen it, it was the like nineteen seventies, uh, uh, the Incredible Hulk that was on TV show. Uh, with David Banner, not Bruce Banner, because they didn't like the name Bruce because it was too alternative <laughs> did you hear that you, you heard that story didn't you and uh yeah so they weird. thought it they thought it implied uh a specific sexual orientation and i don't get it well, so, i'm so glad they didn't i didn't so glad they didn't do that when they brought the hulk movies back out i thought that was terrible yeah um, i think this but, episode proves at least the hulk's not gay <laughs> <laughs> that's true and we know she hulks not so but <laughs> which i will say for that but anyhow um it was a really great introduction to this and it tied it into the original one and it had like the things that it looked a lot like some of the ed norton movie show too and they tied it into how it opened it with her losing it. but i thought it was funny you notice it's not it's a different actress who does uh the she hulk uh-huh. And she's in a costume. Um, not as big as Lou Ferrigno, uh, who did the original uh play dog. But yeah, and then it goes to the Savage She Hulk, and I thought that was great because once she went Savage last episode, and that starts the problems this one. And that was the title of the original She Hulk series, was the Savage She Hulk. 
and I thought it was great. And so did you, I think you enjoyed this intro too, the way you were talking? Dude, I didn't get through it all to the actual show. I watched this thing like four times before even <laughs> going through the rest of the episode. Um, Sean, who does a lot of our reviews with us, we sat and watched this together early Thursday morning. Yeah. And I'm telling you, as soon as this started, I just went. <laughs> and like, it just, I was glued to this because I knew exactly what it was. And Sean was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> It was that, hysterical to me. I loved this. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. No. That was that, oh, man. That was, that was great. great. Yeah. So, but no, it was really good. And if you guys haven't seen that, or, or take the time to go up and, on YouTube and find the uh, the footage of the original um, Hulk introduction, the Incredible Hulk TV show, it was worth it. So, but after this, we have to go deal with some of the aspects of when Jen went savage last time after she got, uh, like, kind of raged out after Intelligentsia did all that stuff. And we wake up, uh, or excuse me, Jen wakes up, we see her there, in Blonsky's cell. It looks like the same one anyway, where this is designed to control Hulk-type creatures. And one of the things is, too, it was neat to see that Jen didn't try to escape. She turned herself in. Because she could have, you know, easily. I mean, there's probably only a few people on the planet who could probably con catch her and control her um, if she didn't want to be uh, captured. So, but we got the same thing. As she's in there, her friends come in and uh, they say, you're an out-of-control Hulk. And it went right back to what Bruce said in the first episode. It says, once they see you as a monster, that never goes away. And I think that's so true here when we're talking about this. And... Now she's got to cover that. Uh, but basically there's a plea deal in place. Uh, they're not going to press charges as long as she wears an inhibitor. So that's kind of her bargain there. So she's got to be on that. And I thought that Pug, who is great, by the way, I, I wish I, I, I want more of him in She-Hulk season two, which I hope we're going to get. Uh, the hint at and it. I'm like, he goes, I left, a, I left a, a, a message for your cousin. And I was very calm considering I was talking to a Hulk. And uh, and that was great. Then we come into the fact that Jen has lost her job. She has to move back in with her parents. And this is really kind of a sad scene here. She's like giving up that house that we've seen her in. And it, it takes place over a while, I think. Because, you know, you don't just sell a house yeah. and move out over the span of an afternoon, right. you know? And all of this had to fall out. She had to go through all these things. Um... And they talk about her and they define her not as Jennifer Walters anymore, called the cousin of the Hulk. And I, you know, you kind of see where, she, how low she's hitting now. And uh, I did love the scene though when her dad is chasing him off on the hose when they want to interview her. Get off, Get my, off lawn. my lawn. I thought that was great. <laughs> that was and, awesome. Um, when we finally see her her room that was it looks like it's been that way for a long time. There's a lot of movie posters there with strong female characters because we had uh, Legally Blonde. Mm -hmm. And what we had the Aaron um, Brockovich. Aaron Brockovich. I thought those were both really kind of good. Kind of showed some of her background in there and tied into who Jennifer Walter is and who she wanted to be. And uh, my question for this was: any of this kind of unexpected to you, like after the way the last episode ended? No, um, I it made sense to me. Yeah. Um, I, I think I even called it during the last reel. Like, yes, yeah, she just lost her job. You did. Um, yeah, you called that out. Yeah, I didn't expect them to just be like, I mean, it makes sense because the government in this world at this point is basically just like, we have to control this somehow. Mm -hmm. And this makes sense. The next step is, okay, here's a Hulk. She's done something stupid. She's submitting herself to the law. Let's stick a thingy on her and stop her from being the Hulk. Mm -hmm. That's just, that made sense. Yep, it, it did. And, but it did kind of, this is, this should have been the low point. And I knew we were going to hit this. You could see this is where it was going. They led up to this for a long time. And I think this is going to go to why I didn't like the ending. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't like how it was solved. And we'll get to that, though. Because after this, though, after she's moved back home and she can't hulk out anymore because of the inhibitor, uh, Nikki comes over and they start doing the hunt for the Hulk King. And... Um, and then after that, she's actually going to go see a meal about the problem. So this is where we start off. It's funny, they got the big board with the string and connecting everybody, and they've got notes. So you can see this Great. is taking a while, too. 
because this is, you know, they've got a ton of research here. And it was funny though, I really thought that a lot of the things that they wrote up on this screen, if you kind of stopped it and looked at it, were the kind of comments that She-Hulk, the, the TV show that She-Hulk is getting from the trolls for She-Hulk. Yes. So the same thing that they're seeing out there that they knew people would say about She-Hulk is actually what they put on the board. They're mocking the trolls. I love and it. I did love that. Cause I'm like, that is great. Uh, and then we get the, uh, uh, the, uh, the video of Jen dancing in college. And I think that that could have tied back to uh, one of our senators, AOC. Uh, who did that video in college and they were ha. mocking her for it. And I'm like, it's a girl in college and she did a video of herself dancing. Who cares? You know? Sorry. It's but anyhow. No, I agree. And I kind of wonder if that's not something that Tatiana just had. Because she looked really young in the video. So I don't know if maybe they just threw a little bit of de-aging on there and just did it on the set. But... I think it'd be hilarious if that's actually something from Tatiana's college years. Or, it, yeah, it could have been. You know, I can see her doing it and having fun dancing. So, but I can also see her doing Jennifer Walters and doing that too, trying to take a break from studying at UCLA uh, before she went to Harvard. Yeah. Uh, I think she went to Harvard in here, didn't she? I do not know. She did in the comic books, but she went to UCLA when she was starting because there was a, in her room, there was two, a pendant for UCLA in there too. So, uh, but yeah, and it's funny. Then there's video of of Dennis. Remember Terrible Dennis, who was dating the. Uh, uh, this made me uh, feel gross. Yeah, because he came out and, and said things that were blatant lies about her, and once again, diving how down how far down she can get, and uh, she decides to finally go. Maybe Emil knows how what this is like. I mean, he's been through this. I'm gonna, you know, she's gonna take off to the retreat. She's gonna get away from her house, get away from all the reporters. It's funny, she texts him and there's no response. And I'm like, of course not. They don't have Wi-Fi at the retreat. You know, that's, they don't have coverage. Because the whole thing, you know, with her trying to do the cell phone dance to find that. And uh, then there was a great, though, fourth wall thing here. And this was the, her phrase. Uh, this is not a reluctant superhero story. I'm just getting screwed over. Yeah. Is this what you guys want? right to the people who are complaining about this show. It's like, this is this what you really want to have happen? Did you really want me to lose everything? Did you really want me to hit rock bottom? And I just didn't like it. So, um, you know, like, well, I, I like it, but I didn't like that that's, that all these people are saying the same things. They've got to reference it that way. But then we have something cool that Nikki takes that video of Jen dancing and uses it in, in for, to find a way into intelligentsia. I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. And uh, while she's working on that, Jen decides to go back to the, the, the retreat. She gets there. She meets the Wrecker again. And I wonder if he's ever going to become a bad guy again. I, The Wrecking Crew, I think they could have done more with them, but who knows. Um, but she's reading the, the haiku book and thinking about how terrible it is. And I thought that was really funny. Uh, and... Uh, then we kind of cut back and forth here. There's the, the A and B story, and they do come together at the end with uh, Nikki's told Pug he needs a, you know, time for a favor, and uh, she makes him go to the intelligentsia meeting. And he's like, I, I don't, I don't want to do this. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Keep your earbud in. Aren't they going to think that's weird? She goes, No, there's a bunch, of, a bunch of them will have it. <laughs> I'm just like, Yep. And he gets in there, and all you hear is intelligentsia talking about how bad some of the the, the female superheroes are like Lady Lady Thor. Mm -hmm. And his only complaint about Lady Thor is that he doesn't like her because she's a girl. But then he says he'd like her if she was a guy. But the only difference between the two of them is that she's a girl. So obviously the only reason he doesn't like her is because she's female. And they just go into this and they just have bought fully into all of this bad hype that is out there about She-Hulk. And uh then I thought Pug was going to get called out here because Todd is there. Surprise, surprise. And he's like, I knew you were one of us. I knew it. And Pug's like, yeah, I'm, yeah. And uh, I thought that was there. And then we get the big reveal that Todd is the Hulk King. And I'm going to say, you and I both thought this was too easy. And yeah. 
we overthought it. You know what I mean? I'm well, like, it can't be him. He, I wanted him to be a dolt or a pawn or something. Right. I didn't want to give him credit to be this person. And yeah. I thought this was, this was one of the things, I thought this was sloppy writing. I thought this was, you know, taking the easy way out because it, everything pointed to this and I didn't want that. But then again, I think that's why they did it because they wanted to, to put people like me that want to waiting for something bigger you go, no, it was just this easy. So you were going to say something about this, though. No, I we had talked a couple of different ways because I've been on Team Leader. And Me too. I am. I was initially like, oh, it's just him. And then when we take the turn later and everything happens, I'm like, this is so much better to me than it being just the leader. Because it makes sense in the way she explains it doesn't need to happen like this. Right. I don't like Todd being the villain. And mm -mm. I still maintain, as I said last episode, Todd's not the villain. The villain is bro culture. Yep. That's the villain of the show. Um, and formulaic storytelling. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't please. I think he also looks really stupid when he hulks out. Oh, he's supposed to. I think that's done intentionally. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, you know, I just, and it, it tied it up at the end, but I just, I'm like, really? I wanted more. And I had so much fun with this episode, and we're getting ahead of myself here a little bit, that the ending let me down because I wanted to see her as her and the Hulk take thing, control of things and not the way they did. So, but anyhow. Let's get back to the, the plot here. So then uh, we kind of find out that the meeting is on the retreat location. So the intelligentsia is right out there by Emil Blonsky. And Emil does show up, but not as Emil. He walks in as the abomination. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, though, if you listen to him here, though, some of the stuff he says sounds more like the Emil before the calm. When he starts thinking, you've got to take control. You need to do what you need to do. That does not sound like the calm, you know, uh, 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 Obama stay. Uh, I just want to point out here. here, is it just me or did he sound a whole lot like Korg? I didn't put that together. So He's a big, tall CGI monster. And to me, yep. he sounded so much like Korg. I think it's the accents. Yep. Yeah, but Tim, I, th I thought it was Tim Roth. So, mm -hmm. but with a voice, something in there. Uh, but that is so in there and he comes this and Todd uses the stolen blood to become the Hulk and Hulk's out and he does look terrible. He looks <laughs> like a bro Hulk. You know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, like Hulk. he's been lifting on the Jersey shore and not, uh, you know, anywhere else. And uh, then after this, everybody else shows up. First of all, Hulk drops through the ceiling and you know, Abomination is protecting Jen because, no, this isn't what it looks like it's supposed to be. And then Tatiana breaks in and you have all of this big fight scene and Abomination is actually protecting uh, Jen from Todd Hulk, not Hulk Hulk. Um, and then from Hulk Hulk, you know what I mean? And it is, this is this massive fight. And I, I did think that this was not going where I wanted it to. I didn't mind Bruce showing up. Uh, but I didn't think he needed to. Yeah. Uh, I want him to come back because I want to know what's going on. But Tatiana? I had no idea why she was there. That made no sense. You know, the next thing we had to happen was Daredevil come in and fight her. You know, maybe I Electra was, break in. Yeah, I was very confused. <laughs> like, um, I was as confused as Jen Walters. I was like, oh, Titania's there too. That makes sense. Why is she here? She would be there breaking up a bro Hulk thing because she's literally female empowerment in the worst possible way. And mm -hmm. then Hulk showed up and I was like, why did he just drop out of the sky? Yeah, he just dropped in. Like yeah. He, like he just landed from outer space. Yeah. And dude, and, uh, Todd was going to murder her. Yeah, he was. Like, straight up, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, even though I don't think he can, but that's... That's yeah. fair. Boy, he doesn't know how to fight as a Hulk. So, well, and Abomination... Abomination's going to mop the floor with him. Oh, 100%. You know, that's, 
Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. If he decides to, the only He's person who's going to stop a yeah, the only person who's going to stop Abomination is going to be uh, the Hulk, um, because she Hulk's strong. She's not as strong as the Hulk, so that's at least not in the Marvel Comics world. But there. So, any final thoughts on this before we get to the real ending? No, I'm good. We talked about Todd. Um, yep. I think Titania just showing up there was to give that whole like overwhelming weirdness. It, um, it did. Although I liked why she was there at the very end and what she was oh, doing. We'll get to that. That was but, funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. This whole meeting, like this is exactly what is wrong with our culture. What is wrong with what people do to women and what is wrong mm -hmm. with America. The internet, and I've, I've said this actually a couple of times in the last week talking to people about this episode. Yeah. You know, 50 years ago, when you had these nut jobs, they had to go find each other. Mm -hmm. Now they have the internet and they can just talk to each other from across the country. Yep. This is exactly what's wrong with the internet. Yeah. But then again, you have to say this. On the flip side of that, you and I are from across the country. Oh, 100%. And you and I can get together and talk about this too. So pros and cons I because think I would I wouldn't have the same group of people to talk to and have fun with online so um I had a guy uh it's actually an old pastor of mine he used to give a lesson where he talked about um the the overbalance of even a small piece of evil inside a large piece of good and he talked mm -hmm. about how if you walked into your mom's house and she was making brownies and mm -hmm. she went out into the yard and picked up a teeny tiny piece of dog turd mix it in with the brownies you're still not going to eat any of the brownies because there's a little <laughs> bit of that in there and a little bit ruins the whole thing so the internet does do a lot of good you know internet commerce um yep from medicine to shipping to entertainment to communication mm -hmm. everything our entire economy depends on the internet it but does. the underbill of the internet makes it just unbearably bad no, and there's some of that there, but yeah. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get to the real ending here now, though. And it's a huge fourth wall break where Jen comes in and goes, this is what you guys wanted? And then this threw me off for a second. I thought my screen had actually... Same! And it implies that we just stopped it because we were so fed up with what was going on with the story. We didn't want to watch it anymore. And we went back to the Disney... Uh, like selection screen for Marvel mm -hmm. and it's then Jen actually busts through the She-Hulk window and starts looking around and she goes that's the one I need and she goes into the uh, one of the making of shows mm -hmm. so she can get behind the scenes and she has done this in the comics too where she has gone and faced the writers in the comics about bad story writing and she's actually like ripped the comic apart and you can see like like presses and stuff and she's like comes through and she goes and talks to the writers and tells them to fix stuff. So this is on par with, with She-Hulk. That's awesome. Yeah. So they talk about Deadpool being the first four wall break guy. You know, Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk broke the fourth wall in ways dare, uh, the way that um, Deadpool never could because he would make comments. She-Hulk changed her own story. That's cool. And Deadpool may call some stuff out, but She-Hulk knows she's a character in a comic book or in a TV show and she's going to fix things because she's that powerful. So if you want to talk about the ultimate power in Marvel and in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, She-Hulk might have it. She changed the she changed the story being written about her to be what she wanted. That I'm sorry. That beats Thanos. <laughs> Cuz yeah. you know, I don't I don't want him to snap his fingers. So let's let's rewrite that. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and she could do it after the fact, I think. <laughs> because she changed what had happened up to this point in the story and changed the fact that things happened. But anyhow, um, she's now on the set of Marvel Studio. And actually, one of the scenes she walks by is a scene that they were filming for this show. I don't know if you caught that. It's from a yes. different angle. Um. 
and this is it's funny it's, it's um this is a real location this is the real disney set there it's the real disney studios she's walking around um you see the little thing there it's got the seven dwarfs holding up and you've got disney holding mickey mouse's hand that's really in the studio so they filmed this really on their own set so that's different but there and once she's moving around one of the qr codes you can get down here now and that's that if you wanted a comic it's in this in this section it's on one of the doors that opens up i believe uh, you see Captain America in here, and he's like, I want you to put down your cell phone um, because of all of the the, the secrecy that goes on here. Um, or maybe she wants She-Hulk in the next show. Let's hope. I mean, that, that, would, be, that would be good. Um, she goes into the writer's room, and uh, there's some of the comics on the walls here. And actually, one of the people in the writer's room is Gao, yeah. the writer of this show. And I thought that was great. There's a couple other people there too. I don't can't call them all out, but I would call it some of the comics on the walls are from her some of her good series, the first series, the second series, and it looks like there's a Planet Hulk one in there too. So, leading into that, um, but she calls out the writers for the bad storytelling, and that would be to me like calling out the fact that Todd was the Hulk King. That's just too easy. It's just you you fed it to us too much for to believe it. Um, and then says that she wants to talk to Kevin. And I thought this was amazing that I I use the show with subtitles. So the first time I saw this, Kevin was capital K-E-V-I-N oh. with dots. If you didn't have this on, then you would have just heard them say Kevin Feige. and implied Feige. For me, I'm like, that's some kind of acronym that she needs to go talk to. So I kind of got some heads up on that. I wasn't quite as surprised. Um, but they said, this is what Kevin wants. She says, I'm going to go see Kevin. And this walk here, when she goes into the Marvel Studios, there is so much stuff to see here. The Iron oh. Man suits, the Thanos figurines, the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy fan figurines. Um, She-Hulk gets to see herself as a figurine, which I thought was hilarious. Um, the Hulk's in here. And just so much stuff here. Um, she actually flips through that D, uh, uh, the NDA. And Marvel does have this absolutely huge, long NDA that people need to sign if they're going to go in. And then afterwards, she goes and gets to meet Kevin. Oh, I just, just have a fight scene in the hallway, which was reminiscent of like Thor's fight scene, mm. uh, Black Widow's Thor's fight Black scene. Black Widow. The um, white hallways well, the, and everything. Thor was, when Thor went to get his hammer back in the first one, he's oh, fighting yeah. in those white containers. Yep. And who else had a fight scene in a hallway like this? Um... Somebody else had one too, um, but it's the hallway, oh, Daredevil and hallway fights. <laughs> yep, Daredevil hallway fights, but yeah. his weren't so well lit usually. Um, and then we meet Kevin. It was an acronym for the Knowledge Enhanced Visual Interconnectivity Nexus. Um, and it looks like funny thing is it's a robot. It looks like he's wearing a hat, a baseball hat, because Kevin Feige always wears a baseball hat. And uh, this is a pretty amazing scene where all the screens are there and it shows all the movies. Uh, all the comic books that are here with the different storylines, including, I think, a Deadpool one, just so you know. I didn't I think catch I that. I think I saw one there. Um, but Hulk, She-Hulk, um, uh, Planet, uh, some of the Hulk ones, and just so many comics here. I mean, I didn't have time. I didn't stop and write them all down. And uh, this is where she comes in and she convinces Kevin um, about to change the ending because this show is not about any of these other storylines it's about jen coming to terms with who she is as both herself and she hulk this connection and so many of the other marvel movies have been about who i am what are my powers how do i relate well how am i of a person now that i'm this where do i fit in society other than maybe captain america who right. knew right what he was supposed to do once he was able to get once he got his powers he could finally do what he wanted to do uh, but like uh the winter soldier like sam I mean, like Peter Parker. I mean, so many of these people coming to terms with that uh, in Moon their Knight. first movies. I mean, yeah, all of them. And this is that's what this is about. And, you know, there was a lot of other things. They're talking about some of the daddy issues that are out there for all the Marvel stuff. The great line, when are we getting the X-Men in their little fourth wall break? We, <laughs> like, Come on, we need this. I did this for you. Like, I did this one for you. Um, talking about blood as a super serum why, why 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 are we going back to that same old trope um they uh all about these other things and the one thing is we'll see you on the big screen she's really no and i thought that kevin making a joke about that yeah. and um 
then and then it's going to go back to the to the the world there and i'm going to get that in a minute but i i this is where like the hulk's taken out of it um he doesn't show up todd doesn't like the how he becomes uh the the hulk part of it and actually kevin even said well i had a big reveal that i wanted the hulk here for and she's like save it for the movie and you know and basically she wanted dead a uh, daredevil back you know like she went through like hey this is what I would have liked as Jennifer Walters. I would have liked this to have happened, Emil to take responsibility, Daredevil to be here. Hulk doesn't need to show up. I can take care of myself. I don't need him here. Tatiana doesn't have to show up. You know, I can take care of this. This is my story going back to the title of the episode. Whose story is this anyway? Or whose show yeah. is this anyway? And Jen came in and took back control of her show. And I didn't enjoy this. I didn't like how she just came in and told a computer system to change what she didn't like about how the show was ending, and it changed. I didn't think that there was any true resolution of the story. Now, I didn't like that the Hulk showed up. I didn't like that Tatiana showed up. I didn't like that Todd became a Hulk. I didn't like those same things she didn't like. I just didn't like how they solved it with Jen breaking the fourth wall and going into the studios and talking to Kevin. That's what I didn't like. Not that I thought it was those things that were good, um, but I didn't like how she went about it this way. I didn't like using breaking the fourth wall. By the way, Kevin says you won't be able to do this next time. So. Yeah. So, but anyhow, you liked this ending. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Convince so, me why I should like it. <laughs> I'm just going to read you the bullet points that I uh, wrote down. Hey, sure. Jessica Gow's in the room. She-Hulk gets a yeah. Black Widow fight scene. There's a baseball cap. Jen has a yeah. closing argument where she talks about the X-Men. <laughs> Everything you just went... <laughs> um, <laughs> I love this because we've spent this entire season seeing how the world, other lawyers, villains, mm -hmm. outside of the show, our culture... Even actual people outside of the show, humans, just mm -hmm. degrading the character and the actress. And this was really a moment. I mean, other than the fact that I laughed hysterically when I saw a little robot with a little baseball cap that says Kevin on it. I was like, yeah. this is perfect. Because I really was expecting Feige to like swivel around in a chair. And then mm -hmm. after we saw the robot, I was like, wouldn't it have been great if he was like a life model decoy? But all that aside... You reached the life model decoy of, of Tony, Tony Stark. Stark right. <laughs> um, I really love this ending. Okay. Because it was her taking control of her reality. Mm -hmm. In a way that no other superhero, even Thanos and Wanda, can't do. Yep. So I really liked it. Um, I really can't explain why. Other than the mm -hmm. fact that she's kind of a badass in doing that to me. I know it's kind of a bland way of saying it, but yep, I'd love this ending. And I feel like I'm in the minority. Most people I've talked to have thought it is very clever. They thought it was different. I do say that it was not formulaic. It's a, this is the first time something like this has been done. Uh, but I just, I didn't enjoy it. I wanted Jennifer to be able to, to put things together. I didn't want her to have to go out and, and in a way she did, but I didn't want her to do it outside of her story. I wanted her to do it in her story and not just go back and find something, go, I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. She could have just said, I don't want intelligentsia to have ever released that footage. You know what I mean? And then we never have her getting, losing her job. You know what I mean? Mm. This is why I, I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't also enjoy how bad the how bad that scene was before she stopped it. Oh yeah. So, but let's go here. Now we've got the final real ending. Um, so, uh, no Hulk, because this is not about him. No Todd changing too formulaic. Emil taking responsibility for his actions. He's even going back to prison for ten years. Maybe. Um, Daredevil yeah. just landing in the superhero pose. I'm here to help. <laughs> and he goes, "It's all over." He goes, "All of it." And then, all right, Tatiana going, oh, Daredevil, I love, and he, he gets justified that people know who he is because Jennifer didn't. I thought that was great. Um, 
and uh then uh then they all get they all go back home and they're having dinner and uh matt murdoch is getting taken over the coals by jen's dad about so you don't make a lot of money um where are you gonna go what is happening with grandkids you know well, every not just conversation that, <laughs> is going to be this and i thought it was great to see him here but by the way this is the first time we have seen daredevil on screen with one of the first avengers when hulk shows up oh yeah. so this has made uh matt murdoch daredevil the one that was from netflix officially connected to the mcu because the hulk's here so and we meet the next member of the new Avengers, or the young Avengers, Scar. And I don't know that we're going to get the World War Hulk stuff that I wanted to get, because I think that's supposed to happen before Scar comes back. And unless Bruce has completely blocked out when he took over Sakaar, uh, I don't think we're going to get Planet Hulk. Is it just and me, we- or did that look like Robbie Amell? I don't know who that is, so I'll say sure it did. <laughs> he played, um, didn't he play Firestorm in the DC universe, in the in the CW universe? Mm, I don't know. Like I said, I don't I don't know the the actor. So, but yeah, and then um, then we kind of finish this up after that conversation. And by the way, I love the Hulk shirt in this. By the way, when he's got like a bowling shirt on, I think it's 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 hilarious. It's like blue and white with palm trees. And I'm like, how are you wearing this? Um, but then it's funny when uh, when Jennifer is going back to, into the courtroom as She-Hulk, because she's suing the intelligentsia guys now. She's taking them to court for what they did. And the lawyer stops and asks her, you know, who are you going in the courtroom as? And she basically says, you know, uh, or, you know, how are you going to hand out justice? She's like, I'm going to hand out justice. Blah, blah, blah. He goes, as you or as the She-Hulk? And she's like, both. So she's kind of taken on that Daredevil conversation to heart. So we're going to see her work as kind of like a Matt Murdock, I think. And it could be really interesting. I like it. And I do think that we still may see from early on the conversation of uh, Murdock, Nielsen, Page, and Walters. And we'll see the LA edition. for, And this is how they stay in contact and work together. And she might become a pro bono attorney and all right maybe i'll do performance fees or performance <laughs> like uh like uh, uh appearance fees to pay for her legal her, her uh, it's an abomination degree. action there it is you know she could go up to the retreat and start giving talks up there as he's in jail so and this was the real ending here that, that this one. so how did you how did you what did you get out of this scene i mean other than I... the major reveal about scar yeah oh i like that um I wrote down that quote. She said that she said um, they have to be held responsible for their actions. The message is, if you harm, attack, or harass innocent people, I'm coming for mm-hmm. you. And that's the that's the message of the show because that's she has been under attack and she's been an innocent person up until the, whole the time. last thirty seconds of the last episode. Property damage aside. Um, that's the message and that's mm-hmm. what happens this entire show is a commentary on forums and comic boards and review bomb mm-hmm. that's exactly what this is and I love it I mean I, I want five more seasons of this I, I, this I think writing. I do think we have a second one for sure yeah and uh this was a fun enough show and a later show and that's that we have those my final thoughts there so we'll get into that in a minute uh, but then again, we did have an after credit scene, and we had a cool couple cool things in the credit. I thought it was hilarious in the end credits when Kevin, the robot, is reading Savage Sea Hulk number one. I didn't catch that. Yeah, so he's ah. he, he's like, after this, I got to find out what's going on with this character now because she just messed up all my plans um, by just coming in and talking to me. Um, then I don't know if did you catch that um, Princess Silk Feather? No in the credits was wearing the inhibitor. <laughs> Who's Princess Silkfeather? His favorite chicken. Oh, right, right. <laughs> He's wearing the inhibitor. <laughs> what? <laughs> so that's how they're getting away with Abomination. Um, 
uh, having some issues. And this explains why Princess Silkfeather was, you know, involved in the last thing with the electric shock. So, mm -hmm. um, but in there. And then um, we have Emil sitting in his cell again. And then uh, Wong comes to break him out and take him to Kamra Kaj. This which... kind of got spoiled. Did it? Yeah, because it goes through all the credits and I'm like, and it says guest starring Benedict Wong. I'm like, Wong wasn't in this scene. Oh, Wong's in this. Mm hmm. <laughs> it was kind of a let down, I didn't, but I didn't see that in the beginning. So, oh, yeah. I, this, uh, but it was funny though. He goes, He took your time. He goes, You got sucked into another show. And the question is, did he get sucked into another show that he was binge watching right. with Madison? Or did Emil Blonsky just break the fourth wall <sighs> and say he was got sucked into another show, meaning we're going to see Wong in something else? I don't know. I hope it's but, the latter one, but I'm Team Madison because I, I don't want other about, people like, to break the fourth wall. A big wall. screen TV or something like that. So It's peak TV. Peak TV, that's right. So in there so but this has been the end this is kind of the end of our uh she hulk series i think we've got a couple of things that you and i are going to do mm -hmm. with uh it, toward the end of the year we've got uh wakanda forever yet we've got the holiday special yet with uh, guardians of the galaxy and we're going to do a couple um just general nerd uh nerd talk ones about some christmas ideas those are coming up not too long i have to get take out my christmas sweater order a new one um i think Ugly Christmas setters should be a requirement for those episodes. Just throwing that out there. Oh, I'm I got one better. Hmm. It's gonna be a surprise, but I got one better. All right. So, but before we so, and I've had a great, uh, great fun filming these as always with you. But my final two questions for you uh, are: first of all, what do you think is next for She-Hulk? Where are we gonna see her again? Where would you like to see her again? Other than the obvious of season two and Daredevil born again. Yep. which I think are both givens. Mm -hmm. um, we got four movies announced at D23 or San Diego yep. Comic Con, either or. Two in front of Kang Dynasty and two in front of Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. I think we could potentially see an A-Force movie. And okay. she's a shoe in for an A-Force movie. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see her in Captain America. Re oh, that makes sense. Because we, tying just the simple We Want You from Captain America. Yeah. Uh, I think we may see her there. Uh, and uh, what was else? Oh, side note. Uh, I had told you that Harrison Ford had turned down Thunderbolt Ross. It looks like uh, that was misinformation. Uh, I heard that he is now going to sign on as Thunderbolt Ross. So yep. we may see him, see her show up in uh, the Thunderbolts movie, at least as a token appearance. I really think, um, I think he shows up in there, squares off against them because I love Anthony Mackie, but the movie needs a little bit more star power. Harrison Ford brings that. Mm -hmm. We get Thunderbolt Ross squaring off against Bucky and Cap. And then I think he gets juiced at the end. And the villain for the Thunderbolts is Red Hulk. And so, I think that's the reason we see Bucky change over to that. And uh, I can tell you this, though, that the uh, Captain America movie, I think is going to be really interesting. I can see her in that. Harrison huh? Ford bringing that star power in, but then Harrison Ford now has been in Star Wars. He has been in the Indiana Jones series, and now he's in Marvel. Um, he's got that triple crown. I that's 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 that, that's it. You can't do more. I mean, those are the biggest series he's that have Ender's ever been out. Game. Oh, that's right. So, if only they'd gotten a way to get him in Harry Potter, that would have been that would have been. <laughs> we'll just recast uh, Grindelwald again. <laughs> That would be good. So, <laughs> get the All right, hell everybody. off my magical castle! <laughs> All right, everybody. So this has been the end of uh, our last episode for the Sea Hulk uh, for Series One. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we love putting these together. We love talking about it. Please let us know your thoughts and comments down below. Uh, it really helps our algorithms here too. If you would like and subscribe, uh, so please do that. And if you'd like to get a hold of us, uh, there's a couple ways to do that. Jake, how do they get a hold of you? I am at the Jake the Nerd on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and TikTok, where I am still working on an MCU countdown and a couple other uh, fun things over there on TikTok. Nice. And for me, I'm much more simple. I'm just Jim at nerdnetwork.com. Just got to pull the values out, vowels out of the nerd network part. And, and you can email me there. 
So with that, thank you everybody for joining us through the series. We had a great time and we look forward to seeing you in the next ones. Thank you. Hey, thanks for choosing this video here on the Nerd Network. John, what else can they find here on the network? Well, as always, we have a wide breadth of programs to fit anybody's needs. Uh, every Monday, we dive into select nerdy headlines with our news show, News with the Nerds. Then also make sure to check out our new homebrew live D&D show, Adventures in Nevermore. This one airs every Tuesday evening. Also, every month, I take Jake on a journey through a vintage movie or a cult classic from the 70s, 80s, or 90s that I've watched and, and love, and he has missed out on his never seen before. We review these on my show, From the John's Vault. Also, we have Nerds in Conversation. This is our show where we examine current social, political, and civil issues facing the world today, but through the lens of nerd culture. Things like mental health and the value of diversity and inclusion. Finally, we have our flagship show, Nerd Talk. This is where the nerds get together and we discuss and review new movies and TV shows, mainly on the big three nerd franchises like Marvel, Star Trek, and Star Wars. However, we also hit into other properties as well, like the Orville, House of the Dragon, and Rings of Power. We have content to fit any nerd niche, so check them all out. Absolutely, and if you're here and you're still here at the end of this video, please go ahead and click subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get notified of all the content we drop here on the Nerd Network. And do us one more big favor, like it, so that YouTube will share this with all the people out there who have nerdy interests and want to come alongside us and share this with your friends. Because the more people we have in the conversation, the better the conversation is. Thank you for choosing our content here on the Nerd Network. And as always, have a great day and be safe. Thank you.